Welcome back to Radio Entrepreneurs. I'm Jonathan Friedman in the studio today, and my next guest is Michael DuPont from Nestle. Michael, welcome to the show. Thank you, John. Glad to be here. It's a pleasure to have you on, and Michael is Director of Customer Development at Nestle, a little company that we've all heard of. <laughs> Just a small company. And uh, we were talking a little bit before we came on the air today about Nestle and its uh, global brands and, and the acquisition uh, over the last uh, little while. It's interesting that you're in New England. We talked about that a little bit. And uh, you run for them the drugstore business. Yes, I do. It's about a $350 million business across the country. You know, most of our business is uh, with CVS, Walgreens, and Rite Aid. In fact, that encompasses about 20,000 stores across the U.S., Puerto Rico, Hawaii. And it's, uh, it, it's a good business for us. It, it's a diversified business. People don't think about drug as being a big uh, food category, if you will, but uh uh, again, it's a uh, it, it's a growing business for us. Every year, it continues to grow. It, it's interesting. Uh, I just note um, it, it seems to me that there's sort of a less and less reliance on what we used to call uh, convenience stores, and more and more reliance on drugstores as go-to places. Correct. And, and so that seems to be a trend over the last decade that I've noticed that uh, people don't go to the I don't want to mention the the, the, the retailers, <laughs> but you know it seems to be more foot traffic and and CVSs and the Walgreens popping up all over the place, and people are going to there to grab a, a snack or something to eat. I, I know my kids walk over there all the time. Yeah, yeah. Key word you said there is convenience, right? You think about it. Um, you know, you're not going to do your weekly shopping at a CVS, Walgreens, or Rite Aid. It's just not prohibitive. They don't have the selection you have. However, if you're driving home from work and you need to pick up a gallon of milk or you need to pick up a prescription, and you walk into a Walgreens, CVS, or Rite Aid, and you see food products there at reasonable prices, you are going to pick up product there because it's a convenience factor. Uh, you don't want to make that trip into the supermarket or the mega store, if you would, every day to to uh, go in and buy one or two things. So they're trying to capture that convenience food, and that's what they're doing in the front of the store. There, if they if you look at it, the prescription back of the house for a CVS or a Walgreens about seventy percent of their volume. Then you look at the front of the house, what they consider is the food and, and health and beauty products. That represents almost 30% of their business. So they're looking to latch on to everybody who's going in there to, to grab that prescription and put one more thing in the basket. So what marketers used to phrase, the impulse buy. Exactly. And, and that's what we're targeting in there. If you look at the, the Nestle organization, we have a huge candy business in there. Again, people picking up candy, uh, seasonal candy. Where else would you go to pick up a Easter candy or Christmas candy or Halloween candy mm -hmm. at a very competitive price? And as, as these stores diversify more and more, they are now getting into the frozen business. We have a huge ice cream business across these, uh, across these retailers, and now they're taking the next step. As you know, CVS, all about health. Mm -hmm. Walgreens, all about health. They are now putting fresh salads in stores. They are now putting produce in stores where you can go in and buy a banana. You can buy an orange. You can buy organic foods. They're tagging organic foods in stores, gluten-free products, all to make that customer feel that they can come in and get that healthy experience at a reasonable cost in a convenient area. And it must, must create uh, challenges not only for store management, but for you guys on the distribution end to figure out regionalization to, to the, the, the marketplace. Exactly. Um, you know, you take the ice cream category, uh, for example. I mean, in a traditional CVS or Walgreens store, you may have two or three doors of ice cream product. Where, and you go into a regular supermarket, you may have 70 doors of ice cream products. So what, does go in the, what goes in those three doors is very important. And it tends to be national recognizable brands. Again, CVS, Walgreens, 8,000 stores across the entire country. They're trying to cater to all those needs and keeping it within that three doors. And sometimes it's tough for the regional players to get in there. Even though they may be successful, um, there is only so much space in there. But as we, we do with Nestle, we try, and, um, we try and go to the customer with different options, a lot of what we call segmentation, right? It's mm -hmm. defining that store to the demographics in which it shops. The products that sell in downtown Boston are not going to sell in Paducah, Kansas. There is just too much of a different um, demographic of that consumer out there. So we try and work with the consumer to, uh, I'm sorry, to work with the customer 
to uh, make sure we have the right items in the right place, but also trying to overlay a national distribution system so you're not bringing in one item to one store in one part of the country.